Hey everybody, this is Mike Campbell here. I'm just taking a look at, um, I'm out here practicing uh, my languages, getting ready for 18 languages in four months. Okay, so this is the book I have printed out for Northern Amis. Uh, we got stories, um, vocabulary lists, um, conversations. This is the one for Skoliek, Atayal. Uh, again, there's a lot of stories and vocabulary conversations. This is the one for Punum, or Punun, 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 or Punun in, in the Ishk. Ishkukun dialect. This is, um, for example, a grammar table. Uh, these are personal pronouns for the Bunun language, and a lot of um, conversations and and stories in there. This is the one for Shaishiat. Now, notice I have all of these color coded. Uh, the color coding scheme kind of goes along with my mind mapping for the the location of these languages. Uh, in Taiwan, what I've done is I've created a grid of um, six lines and then three going across and those three going across represent one for each language and in my computer I make like a word file and I color code all of the boxes in that grid and then I fill in uh, I fill in well I could fill in vocabulary but what I'm really doing is I'm working on filling in uh, sentence structures so for example one of the sentences that I have is there is a book on the table uh, it seems like a very simple sentence but actually no what I have is there is a red book on the table and then I practice with there are two books there are two red books on the table or there are two black books on the table and you can um, change these around there's a black bird in the tree and then you know you have to learn the phrase for like on the street or in the tree or under the table or you know you have a, a location part in the sentence you have a um, an adjective and noun there you also have there is now some of these uh, languages they use there is and they are described in different ways. So um, that's the trick with these languages. And, um, the other thing you got to remember is that what I'm doing is there's 18 languages I'm learning all at once. I'm doing five at a time every month. But the thing is that um, when you have so many languages, I mean, can you even remember 18 the names of 18 Aboriginal languages? And not to mention that you have to remember the whole all, the whole grammar like 50 pronouns for each language, a whole bunch of cases and markings and prepositions and all kinds of stuff for these languages. Can you really do that um, for 18 different languages you've maybe never even heard of? Because uh, what I do in my, my grid screen scheme is that it's from north to south, east and uh, west, west to east. So it's easy for me to remember the names of all the languages. And then I, when I focus on a language, I try to think of my travels there, the people that I've seen, the sights and smells. These are called anchors in your brain. And these anchors will help you remember and recall something about that culture and that language there. So you're able to um, to just pull it up out of your mind. And then I, when I'm doing all of my language training, I'm, I focus my images in my mind on that location and the people there. And while I'm training the, the language, I imagine that these people are speaking these sounds to me. So that it's sort of like a Google map. You zoom in on one place. And then when you zoom into there, you're going to see a lot of detail. So when I zoom out, I see these 18 languages for the for the whole country of Taiwan, right? So up in the left corner, I got Sai Siat, then I got Atayal, and then I've got um, Sakizaya. Next line, I've got Baze, and then I've got um, uh, Sedik and Tuku, and then I have Thao, and then Bunun, and then Amis, and then I have Zhou, Bukai, and Kavalan, and Kanakanavu, uh, Mantaran. Uh, let's see, yeah, Mantaran, and then. Puyuma, and then I have uh, Sharua, and then I have Paiwan, and then Dawu. Okay, so I have everything arranged in my chart like that. I haven't printed it out yet, it's still on my computer. I gotta find a, a color printer for that. But um, the point is that maybe I'll just take some pictures and put them in my cell phone or something like that to remember them. Um, most important thing is how do you organize the, the, the information in your brain and how do you remember it? That's very difficult. Now, the other thing that I'm doing here is that. When I go through these sentences, I'm recording them. So I have my recorder right here, I'll show you. Here's my recorder. See, and I can I can go ahead and press the, um, the play button for the last. Now I've got this plugged in my ears. So I can actually increase the speed on this if I want on the playback. Let me turn the volume up. That's going pretty fast, so I'm going to speed up the, with each repetition. So what I do is, okay, so for example, if I take, um, 
let's say I'm taking like a Zai Lu Sang. I'm taking this topic here. Uh, on the road, so Ilalan, Ilalan. Lu Sang Chi Chu Hundu. There are many cars on the road. Adi Hai Ko Gat Reng Ilalan. Adi Hai Ko Gat Reng Ilalan. Zhou Lu Yang Xiao Xin. You have to be careful when you walk. Na Unen Go Rakat. Na Unen Go Rakat. So Fasu is Basu, Basu. You can see, say it other way. Either way, with an F or a B, Basu is a bus. Okay, so um, you have to line up to get on the bus. Okay, you gotta wear a helmet when you ride your scooter. So Maka is a, is a, a kind of a motion verb. Uh, you add to a noun, so maka autofai. Maka autofai is to drive a, a bike, or, or an auto bike, is uh, borrowing from uh, Japanese. Anyway, the point here is that I do every every sentence uh, from a from the original language. For example, here is in Chinese, and I'll work that into the um, into the. This is Northern Amis, and then all of that gets repeated twice, and then I repeat all of those sentences five to ten times. So I'll do one whole section of my book. And I'll do like each sentence for each section like five times. Then I'll go back and go through all of them again another time. And so if there's ten lessons here like that, and I do each sentence five times, there's like, um, well, basically I've got like maybe five, five sentences per lesson. Ten lessons is 50. And I do each of them uh, five times. It's 250. And then I go through maybe another, uh, another round, maybe 300. I'm doing about 300 to 350 sentences per recording. And then I go listen to that recording four or five times in a day. So I'm actually doing it about a thousand or more sentences just for of training, just for that lesson right there. And I'll go through this whole book, and then I'll do that for five languages. Okay, so five languages time that's about five thousand sentences every day. Five thousand sentences every day of training. Now, when I do in a in a week, in a week times seven days, you're looking at about thirty-five thousand to fifty thousand sentences in a week. Well, probably not more than that. Probably, let's just say, round it down a little bit. About 30,000 sentences a week is what I'm doing. So, in a three-month period of, of 100, you know, like 13, uh, 13 weeks in a three-month period, you get about like um, 30 times 13. It's about 390, 400,000 sentences. Now, if you do 400,000 uh, sentences divided by however many languages you're working on, you're gonna have pretty good grasp, but pretty good grasp of those languages. And then all you have, the only other thing you have to do is keep focused on your position on the map, so you can keep them separate. Okay, so that's how I'm working it. So thanks for watching, everybody.